Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,333. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook, Excel Magic Trick 1,333 start or the finished file so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we got to talk about Power Query, also known as Get and Transform Rounding. Now, different than Excel, Power Query Rounding does Bankers or Gaussian Rounding. Now, what in the world is that? Well, first, let's remind ourselves what arithmetic rounding does. We have to pick a position to round to, and then we look to the digit to the right. And notice, if the digit to the right is 1, 2, 3, or 4, we remove all digits to the right, and we don't add 1 to the digit we're rounding to. If the digit is 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, we remove all the digits and add 1 to the position we're rounding to. And look at that. Count how many digits there are when we don't add 1. 4. Count how many digits when we add 1. 5 of them. So there's a bias for always going up. A 5 always goes up. Now, banker's rounding is going to be exactly the same as this, except for we will treat the middle number, that means the 5, differently. We will round to the nearest even number. This means the 5 can go up or down. And that's the reason that there's less bias when you're using banker's rounding. Let's look at an example right here. If we're rounding to the dollar, the position we're rounding to is the 0. We look to the right, it is a 5. Well, with normal rounding, because that's a 5, this goes up to $11. Let's look right here. Here's another position we're rounding to. We look here, it's 5. So that means this would go up to $10. Both of these would go up with normal rounding. But let's think about banker's rounding. Here it is. The position we're rounding to is 0. There is a 5 right there, so we have to pick the nearest even number, either 12 or 10. So we'll choose 10. We're going down here, not up. How about this one? There's a 5, so we have to pick the two nearest even numbers, 10 or 8. In this case, we go up to 10. Here we went down, here we went up. Now let's check this out in Excel before we open up Power Query. I'm going to say, hey, round, comma, to the 0. That means round to the integer or the 1's position. When I hit Enter, notice this goes up to 11, and this one goes up to 10. Now I'm going to simulate in Excel with a formula how banker's rounding works. Now I wouldn't really normally do it this way, because actually the VBA function, if you made a user-defined function, that does banker's rounding. If you were over in Access, that does banker's rounding. And what we'll see in this video, the number.round function in Power Query, or simply importing it and using transform, will both do banker's rounding. Let's see how this works. Well, I need to ask the question, is the tenths position of 5. So I'm going to extract in my formula, I'm going to extract the digit after the decimal. And I'm going to do that with the mod function. I'm going to say, hey, mod of that. Now, what does mod do? Mod gives me the remainder. So if I say, hey, mod, always divide this number by 1, it'll always give me exactly the remainder, which is the decimal in this case. I'm going to close parentheses and hit Enter just to see that that, in fact, is the case. Now I'm going to amend this. I'm going to say, are you equal to 0 0.5? When I hit Enter, I get a bunch of trues and falses. So when it sees that 5, that's going to be a true. By the way, this is rounding to the ones position. We could build a different logical test if we had to extract like to the penny or something. But here we have our patterns of trues and falses. So I'm going to say, if. And if I get a true here, that means I'm at the 5, and I need to round to the nearest even number. Well, guess what? In Excel, there's the M round function that if I give it a number, I can give it a multiple that says what number I should round to. And I'm always rounding to the nearest even number, so I put a 2 there, close parentheses. That's the value if true, comma, remember, 
banker's round does everything the same as the normal round except for at that 5. So we can simply, for value of false, put the normal round function, comma, 0, close parentheses. We have our value if false, our value if true, and our logical test. Close parentheses and Enter. Now that's simulating banker's round. And now what I want to do is go ahead and add the actual column here, and then add the two rounded, and look at the difference. Alt equals to get the sum function. And now I'm going to do a little trick, because this is an Excel table, and I do not want table formula nomenclature. I'm going to click in the top cell, Control Shift Down Arrow, and actually up in the formula bar, you can see that table formula nomenclature. But now I'm going to hold Shift and go one cell too far. Now I can see it's given me a range instead. I'm going to hit F4 because I want this locked. And then right in the formula, I'm going to backspace and type a 4. That just adds that column without table formula nomenclature. Now I need to add the rounded numbers, Alt equals. And I'm going to do the same trick here. Click in the top cell, Control, Shift, Down Arrow, Shift, Arrow. And I can see I have relative cell references, and that's what I want for this formula. So I'm going to Control Backspace, and then Backspace 4, Enter. Now I'm going to calculate the difference. Original number minus rounded number, and Enter. Now I'm going to copy these two formulas to compare and contrast. And sure enough, the difference for banker's rounding is much smaller than for normal arithmetic rounding. Now let's go ahead, and we can see right here I had this set up in advance. If we compare arithmetic rounding, this went up, this went down. So banker's rounding went down. Here they both went up, so we have a down and an up. And here it went up, here it went down. So arithmetic rounding will always go up. Banker's rounding will choose between the two and go to the nearest even number. Now I'm going to bring this table into Power Query. Click in a single cell, Data, Get and Transform. By the way, Power Query in Excel 2013 and 10, you had to download it and add an extra tab. 2013, it's called Get and Transform. Whichever version, you click on the From Table. I'm going to come over and I'm going to name this rounding test and enter. I'm going to get rid of this step. I didn't really need it. Now, I don't need either one of these columns, so I select the first one, hold Shift, select the second one, right click, removes. Right click on the number, and I'm going to duplicate this column. Double click, and I'm going to call this one transform, because I'm going to use the transform feature on this column to round. Go up to transform over to number column, and there's rounding. And I could select round or simply right click, transform, round, and I'm going to choose round. It asks me how many digits. Zero, meaning I'm going to the ones position or the integer. Click OK. Now, that's the transform column. We want to check that over in Excel. We'll add them up and see what the difference is to see if it's the same as our fabricated Excel banker's rounding formula. Now we're going to do a second option. We're going to add a column, add custom column. We're going to call this, I called it Power Query Rounding Number Dot Round Tab. And the name of our function is Number Dot Round. That's the rounding function. Open parentheses. Double click number. So the first argument is going to be the actual number to round, comma. Second argument tells us which position to round to. So I have a 0. Now, there is a third argument here. And if you Google num.round, you see there's four options. If we leave that third option out, it defaults to banker's rounding. Close parentheses. Click OK. Now let's close and load. Home, close and load to. I want this as a table on the existing sheet. I'm going to highlight that. Click the Collapse button. And I'm going to put this H19 and click OK. Click Load. Now I'm going to highlight these total, all the original numbers, 
total the rounding and the difference, Control-C, highlight above, and Control-V. And sure enough, it's adding the originals. Here it's adding these rounded numbers. And look at the difference. So in either case, whether we use the transform or number dot round or some crazy Excel formula, the actual rounding difference is much smaller, meaning they're closer to the original numbers than if we use the normal rounding function. All right, that's a little fun with Power Query rounding. We'll see you next video.